So today I'm going to do a playthrough of Pokemon Emerald with only a Chimeco. Its base stats are sort of just mid-range, like it has a decent special attack stat, but everything else is just sort of like, eh. Its attack stat is not very good, base 50 is just not going to hit hard. However, what I'm really worried about is the moves that it has access to. It starts with Wrap, and then gets Growl at level 6, and then Astonish at level 9. So yeah, it's not starting this playthrough in a very speedy way. Also then, throughout the playthrough, I'm not going to get access to anything that's particularly outstanding, and Chimeco doesn't have particularly good coverage. It does get Psychic and Calm Mind, which is good, but I'm quite worried about how I'm going to deal with Dark types specifically, especially because they're so prominent in this game. For my playthroughs, I allow myself to manipulate my starter, so in this case, I'm going to go with a modest Chimeco, boosting its special attack and lowering its already terrible attack stat. And in this case, I'm really thinking about the future, because right now, I need my attack stat. Look at how much damage Rap is doing. Like, it's not very much. It is going to take a while to defeat every Pokemon in the early game. What I'm really looking forward to is when Chimeco learns Confusion at level 14. Now there is a good piece of news here, and that's the fact that Chimeco has a fast growth rate, so at least when I do defeat opponents, I'm going to level up pretty quickly. After all, she only has a level 7 Mudkip, and I take the victory despite missing a lot of wraps like, ah, oh, this move's accuracy is just terrible. Once I defeat the first youngster, Chimeco levels up to level 9 and learns Astonish. Now while this move does have the chance to flinch the opponent, ghost moves are all physical in generations, 3, so yeah, it's still using my awful attack stat. Additionally, it doesn't get the same type of attack bonus because Chimeco is a mono-psychic type, and there are a lot of normal type Pokemon in the early games, so this move can't even hit them. On the beach just past Petalburg City, I pick up some items. I will note here that I'm fighting all of the trainers in my path, and that's because I want to level up as fast as possible to 14. I'm gonna need confusion for Roxanne. In the forest, I have to fight this team, Aqua Grunt, and uh, yeah, my rap PP is not looking particularly good. Also, I'm not doing very much damage to this Poochiena. Making matters worse, I can miss with rap. That happens here, and yeah, I run out of PP. So yeah, I'm not gonna be able to deal damage to the Poochiena now. I tried to spam bolt all the PP of Growl, but this just doesn't work, and the Poochiena knocks Trimeco out. I didn't save before this fight, so I have to take the black out here. And I'm going to count that as a reset. After all, what I'm really trying to account for with this metric is the number of times the Pokemon fails throughout the playthrough. In my next fight against the Grunt, things go much better for me and I take an easy victory. Outside of the forest, I pick some berries, and then I head into the Berry Shack. I actually don't know what this place is called. And I always talk to this girl because she gives out a random berry. What I really want here is a person berry because that can really help me in situations where the opponent's Pokemon has swagger. In this case, I don't get it, so that's unfortunate. I head through Rustboro City to Route 1. 16, where I continue my training. Unfortunately, Chimeco is pretty bad, so I have to head back to the Pokemon Center, which takes some extra time before I finally level up to 14 and learn Confusion. Because I really don't want to fall behind in the level curve, especially in the late game, after all, Steven is so strong. I decide to face all the trainers in Roxanne's gym. Here, I'll just mention that if you look in the bottom center, you can see that Confusion's power is listed as 75, and this is because my overlay is calculating the power with added modifiers. So in this case, it gets the 1.5 times modifier because of the same type attack bonus. Okay, with that out of the way, now let's face Roxanne. She leads with Geodude. I go for Confusion, and it knocks it out in a single hit. Alright, that's a really good start. Her second Geodude comes out, and I also take it down in one turn. Unfortunately for me, the Nosepass has high special defense, so my Confusion only does half, then it uses Rock Tomb doing a little bit to Chimeco, and I strike back with another Confusion, was hoping that it would KO, but Nosepass survives. Despite it eating an Orenberry and Roxanne using potions, it still is not enough and I'm able to take an easy victory over the first gym leader. I decided to do the optional battle with May at the south point of the city. By the way, I should mention here that I chose to play Brendan, uh, well I didn't really choose to play Brendan, I just defaulted into it because I used to always play him as a kid and yeah, I forgot that May has a more powerful team. In this case she has a Torkoal, like why? This is definitely a mistake. Anyways, Chimeco is still able to take an easy victory here, and I think that the annoyance that was the slow early game is really out of the way now, because Brawly, who's next, should be very easy for my mono psychic type. After all, I have both psychic and ghost type moves, and Brawly is not known for his type coverage, like his only damage dealing moves are fighting type moves, so yeah. 
However, before I go to Duford Island, I do catch myself some HM mules. After that, I take the boat ride over to the island, pick up the silk scarf, then I grab myself a magic carp just for double battles. By the way, I should mention here that I'm not going to be really strict with myself regarding double battles. Like, I could catch a team of five magic carps and, like, always have those so that if one gets knocked out, I have another magic carp. But then, like, what do I need to do when I need to get across a body of water? So, in my emerald challenges, I'm adding a rule that if it's not the Tate and Liza fight, which is, like, the really important double battle in this run, I'm going to allow myself to use my HM mules, I'm just going to try and use them in a way that is not impactful, so like spamming a status move like Tail Whip or something when it doesn't affect the outcome. By the way, the experience that I've had playing Emerald really suggests in solo challenges that these double battles are not impactful because like, believe me, when you run into them they're like level 12 and like your Pokemon is level 35 and it's like, yeah, like Chimeco is not being helped by my HM mule Meryl. Like it's just really not being helped. Anyways, with that out of the way, now let's face Brawly. He leads with Machop, I go for Confusion, and it gets the one hit. Okay, so far so good, this is really awesome. Meditate's next, the only damage dealing move this thing has is a Focus Punch, so as long as I keep doing damage to it, it's gonna faint. Two Confusions takes it out, and all that's left is Brawly's Makuhita. I go for Confusion, and it gets the one hit. Okay, so that was a really easy second badge for Chimeco. Next, I deliver the letter to Steven in Granite Cave, and then I head to Slateport City. On the beach, I continue my training, and then I even go into the little house where the guy sells soda pops. This guy has a really good business model, by the way, because they're much better than super potions, and he charges much less for them. Like, however, I'm sure it's making your Pokemon really unhealthy. Like, it cannot be good feeding these things soda pops all the time. Like, hey, you're uh, really sick after that battle? Yeah, just like, uh, drink this sugary soda. I talked to this guy. I just want to say here, I always forgot that I had to talk to this guy as a kid, and I wandered around this city so long trying to figure out what to do so that I could get into the museum like also like who is this guy he's not captain stern he's just some random guy and you just have to talk to him before you can proceed with the plot like all right i guess this does really encourage you to talk to every npc after that i pick up some paralyzed heels in the mart these are going to be very helpful for the upcoming electric types after that i head into the museum and i face the aqua grunts there while the lead zubat is easy to take out in one hit from confusion the following carvana could be a problem because it's a dark type Luckily, Chimeco has learned takedown by this point, and while I do hate recoil moves, at least it gets a one hit. Something working in my favor here is the fact that Roxanne's badge did give my attack stat a 10% boost. By the way, yes, in Generation 3 it is only a 10% boost. It was changed from a 12.5% boost from Generation 1 and 2 to a 10% boost in these games. I think that at this point, Game Freak had realized how broken badge boosts were and they were trying to sort of scale them back as much as they could. Turns out, in Generation 4, they were just like, no, no, these things are bad, we're just going to remove them entirely. Which overall, I think is the best thing for the series. I defeat the Aqua Grunts, and then I make my way towards Mauville City. On my way, I do some training, picking up some items as well, and then Chimeco learns Yawn. Now I know Hypnosis is a bad move, like, yeah, it's just terrible, 60% accuracy is awful, but like, Yawn feels much worse. After all, it takes a whole turn before it finally activates sleep. Still, it could be useful in some tight situations. So I'll keep it for now, however, I don't think I'm going to be using it a lot. I earn myself the rare candy from the Trick Master, and then I go up against Mei. She leads with Lombre. I go for Confusion, it does more than half, it strikes back with Astonish doing very little to me, and then I take it out. Okay, that was easy. Next is Marsh Tomp, I go for Confusion, it does more than half, it tries to set up Bide, but of course I'm doing enough damage to knock it out on the next turn. So, looks like this is going to be an easy battle. Confusion finishes the Slugma off, and with that I've made my way into Mauville City. Now here's the thing, Watson has been absolutely brutal in my Emerald challenges to this point. Like yes, Rayquaza got by him on the first fight, but that was like uh, really, really lucky. Go check that video out, by the way, if you haven't already seen it. And Chimeco is not anywhere near Rayquaza's tier, like right? It's gonna perform much worse because its stats are so much worse. So I'm gonna fight all of the trainers in the surrounding areas just to level up as much as possible before I take on this Electric Titan. I even fight all the trainers inside of Watson's gym. This levels Chimeco up to level 33 where it learns Double Edge, which is going to be a good replacement for Takedown, at least in the near future. I give my cute little Psychic Bell Pokemon a Cherry Berry so that it can prevent paralysis at least once, and now I'm as ready as I'm going to be, let's give this a try. Voltorb's first. I go for Confusion, and it takes it out in one hit. Okay. 
good start. Next is Electric. I go for Confusion again, and it takes it out. But now it's time for the really tough Pokemon. Magneton's next. It comes out. However, here, Yawn is perfect, because Magneton loves to use Thunder Wave on the first turn. I outspeed on the next turn, hitting Confusion, doing about a third to the Magneton, which is quite good. It paralyzes me with Thunder Wave, and then it goes to sleep. And it stays asleep long enough for me to knock it out with two more Confusions. Okay, so I've made it to Watson's Ace, the Manectric. It moves first using Shockwave, which only does like a quarter to Chimeco. Alright. Confusion does more than half to the Electro-type. It eats a Citrus Berry, goes for Howl. My next Confusion takes it to Red, and then Watson uses a Super Potion. He, uh, he loves these things. However, then my next Confusion gets a critical hit, and so Chimeco defeats Watson on its first attempt. In this case, I think with a much more dominant performance than Rayquaza. Like, yes, I played Rayquaza a long time before I played this Chimeco playthrough, so there's definitely experience playing into that, and I also did not face a lot of optional trainers with Rayquaza, but, like, I'm still really impressed with this cute little chime. Like, yeah, it's just... Ah, it's so delightful! I can't believe I got through Watson! Okay, so let's proceed on. Now I'm heading north towards Flannery. One thing that I can say for sure that has really improved my performance in Pokemon Emerald as of late is fighting all of the spinning trainers. If you have to pass by a spinner more than once, and you're playing on 4 times speed like I do, it just makes sense to battle them, one for the levels, and two because then you can avoid using the bag trick a second time. After all, if you're using the bag trick and failing, you're also wasting more time. Plus, I end my runs after Steven, and that means I have to save all my rare candies, usually throughout the entire league. Plus, Pokemon Emerald requires a lot of backtracking through areas, and as a result, I'm going to have to pass by these trainers later on, so fighting them now is just a great benefit. After that's out of the way, I pick up the TM for Secret Power. This is a great normal type move. It feels sort of like the Headbutt replacement in Generation 3. While Headbutt has a 30% chance to flinch, Secret Power on normal terrain has a 30% chance to paralyze. I definitely like to keep this TM around because it can solve problems when I run into them, but for Chimeco right now, I don't think it's going to be useful to teach right away. I proceed through Fall Arbor Town, and unfortunately here, Chimeco does not learn Dig. After all, it, this thing really does not deserve to learn Dig. Team Aqua and Magma have a run-in in Meteor Falls, and after that I backtrack to the Gondola, where I get a chance to see the Hiker. Mm, not today. And then it's time to face Maxi. So all of the enemy bosses love to lead with a Mightyena, which is really annoying if you're a physical attacker because it triggers Intimidate, but it's also really annoying if you're a Psychic type because this thing is a Dark type. I accidentally misclicked here and used Confusion on it, and I want to explain why I made that misclick. In Generation 1, when you want to get to the move that is at the bottom of your moveset, you can press up and it will skip to the bottom. But in this case, in Generation 3, if you press up when you're on the first move slot, it does not go down to the move underneath it. It just does nothing and stays there. So I pressed up and then clicked A, intending to select Double Edge, but in this case, yeah, I get Confusion and yeah, it's just awful. So. It's a really bad first turn. On the next turn, I use Double Edge, and it does pathetic damage because Chimeco's attack stat is 36. Like, ugh. Its special attack is 101. Like, almost three times the value of its attack stat, so ugh. As a result, Maxi's Mighty Anna takes me down. So that's my second reset today. Well, let's see what plays out if I don't select Confusion on the first turn. Instead, I can go for Yawn to put the Mighty Anna to sleep, and then I can knock it out over several turns with Double Edge. The unfortunate thing here is I do a lot of damage to myself in Confusion, so I only have less than half health remaining for the rest of the fight. Luckily, Maxi has a Zubat next, which I knock out with one turn of Confusion. And then it's time for Camerupt. I go for Confusion, it does more than half, taking it to orange health. It strikes back with Ember, doing very little to me. Maxi uses a Super Potion, which heals it into green. However, that means I get to move twice in a row, and I knock it out. After the battle, I have to remind myself to pick up the Meteorite. After all, this is important if I want to have access to Return during this playthrough. At least until I get access to Pacific Log Town. In most cases, I want two Return TMs anyways. It gives a lot of moveset flexibility. After that, I head down the mountain and into Laverage town. Here I buy myself a lot of super repels, this is the first town that they're available in, then I pick up the charcoal, and with that I'm ready to head into the gym. So over the past few months, Flannery's been the gym leader that I've underestimated the most. So I'm expecting some resets here. Confusion knocks out the Nummel in one hit, and also the Slugma, but that doesn't really matter because they're usually bad. 
Next is Camerupt, and this is where the fight starts to get hard. I go for Confusion, it does more than half, Camerupt strikes back with Tackle, which does not very much to Shimeko, and then I knock it out on the next turn. Okay, but now it's time for the Torkoal, and this Pokemon, all by itself, is what makes Flannery so difficult. Because I think it can survive one hit from Overheat, I go for Yawn on the first turn. Torkoal chooses Body Slam, which actually doesn't do very much to Chimeco, like its defense stat is decent. On the next turn, my Confusion does more than half. Torkoal uses Body Slam, doing another small amount. It falls asleep, and then I knock it out. Okay, Chimeco, well done. I have to say, when I first said the saying, ring the Chimeco, in reference to the YouTube bell so you get notifications for my videos, I looked at Chimeco's stats and I'm like, I'm gonna have to do a run with this thing one day. And then I was like, no, I don't wanna do a run with this thing because its stats are not particularly good. And its moveset is not particularly good. But now I'm starting to realize that I was wrong. I think Chimeco might actually be really good. I pick up a rare candy in the desert, and then I reunite two lovers. It's like me and my fiance after I make a versus video. And then I head back to Petalburg City where I'm gonna face Norman. Now while I fight the gym trainers, I'm gonna explain Chimeco's advantage over him. For a lot of Pokemon, Dig allows you to outsmart the slacking. You're always underground on the turns when it's attacking, and you're always above ground on the turns when it's loafing around. However, Chimeco has Yawn, so it's gonna be able to make the slacking even lazier by just putting it to sleep. It's also important to note that Chimeco can't be hit by counter tactics, because because Confusion has a special damage category, and so in this case, I'm actually feeling quite confident against Norman, especially with how all the battles have gone until this point. So let's do it. He leads with Spinda. I go for Confusion, and it doesn't knock it out, and as a result, it gets a teeter dance off, confusing Chimeco. Norman heals with a Hyper Potion, I'm confused and hit myself. Uh... I go for Heal Bell, hoping that it would remove the Confusion, but uh, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't work this way. So yeah, I just have to use Confusion and knock the Spinda out over two more turns. Here, Chimeco gets the chance to learn Safeguard, and I figured I would teach it over Heal Bell, after all, Heal Bell has not been very useful to this point. Next is Vigoroth. I go for Confusion, it does a lot taking it to red, it hits with Facade, taking Chimeco under half, and then I knock it out. Okay, so it's time for the slacking, and I'm gonna need to survive a hit on the first turn. I go for Yawn, it makes Slacking drowsy, and then it hits with Facade, and Chimeco hangs on with 9 hit points! Yes! Because of that, the Slacking goes to sleep, and now it needs to stay asleep long enough for me to knock it out. Very unfortunately for me, it wakes up, and then Norman heals it with a Hyper Potion, taking it back to full health. So for that turn, I'm already locked into a Confusion. It does about a third, and now I have to make a decision. Do I go for Yawn and try and put it back to sleep, or do I just keep attacking? Now here's the thing that I realized about Truant in the moment. When Norman uses a Hyper Potion, it actually replaces the turn that Slacking would attack. So it's gonna loaf around on this turn, and that means I can attack twice with Confusion. Because my last one did a third, I'm gonna be able to knock it out. It goes down, and all that's left is the Linoon. This thing isn't really known for attacking, like it loves to set up Belly Drum first turn, but I think because my health is so low, it's gonna try and knock me out. However, my Confusion actually confuses it, it hits itself, and I knock it out on the next turn. Okay, this was a good battle, and again, Chimeco takes an easy victory over a gym leader. But from this point going forward, the game is going to get harder. However, in the short term, Chimeco has some advantages that are about to be realized. The first one relates to its move pool and the fact that Winona is next. After all, Chimeco doesn't get very good coverage, but it does learn Shockwave, which could be great against this flying specialist. And additionally, the next and final move that it learns through level up is Psychic, which is just going to be outstanding throughout the rest of the playthrough. I do have to take my time getting through the grunts in the Weather Institute, however. After all, they have annoying dark types. Now at this point you might think, well, since Winona's next, teach Shockwave and just defeat these dark types with ease. But I think that that's actually short-sighted. Instead, I want to make it through this section of the game with only confusion and double edge. I defeat the rival, and then I make my way into Fort Tree City. And here, I can pick up the TM for hidden power. Now because I allow myself to manipulate my starter at the beginning of the run, I'm able to set my DVs to whatever values I want, and that means I can choose the type and strength of hidden power. In this case, it's a base 70 power fire type move. Now I chose this specifically because Chimeco does have access to Sunny Day, which it can pick up on the very next route. Additionally, I've learned that if you don't plan for Steven, things go very badly for you. So Hidden Power Fire, 
because I need to beat steel types. In Winona's gym, Chimeco levels up to 46. This is probably because it's the fast growth rate. Like, this thing is a high level for this portion of the game. And because of that, it learns Psychic, which is going to be its go-to move for the rest of the playthrough. So now, I think I'm ready to face Winona. Yes, it's without Shockwave, because I want to save that for later on in the playthrough when there's too much water. She leads with Swablu, and this thing has Perish Song, so I want to knock it out right away. Luckily, Psychic gets a critical hit and knocks it out. I think I would have taken it out in one turn anyways. Next is Tropius, Hidden Power Fire gets the job done, and next is Pelipper. Okay, this bird's going to be really annoying, of course it uses Protect, that just wastes a PP of Psychic, but my second one hits and knocks it out in one hit. Okay, that's good. Skarmory time. Hidden Power Fire is obviously useful here, it takes the bird down in one hit, and now all that's left is Altaria. It doesn't resist Psychic, I do a lot, but not enough to take it out, it strikes back with Aerial Ace, does very little, it heals with its Orin Berry, I still find this so weird, and then I knock it out. So yeah, another easy gym battle for Chimeco. This thing is steamrolling through the game, I never would have guessed it. Like, I played the game with Absol, Shift Tree, Sableye, all these Pokemon I thought were going to be pretty good, but no, Chimeco, this is the Pokemon. Ah, <gasps> uh, this is why I love doing these challenges, because you get so delightfully surprised by things like this. Just look at Chimeco's little smile, he's just like, yeah, I'm the best. I am going to completely decimate this game. On the following route, there's a lot of important items to pick up. I grab a rare candy, the person berries, another rare candy, citrus berries, and then I defeat the Team Aqua Grunts at the top of Mount Pyre. This gives me access to another rare candy. Yes, there are three rare candies in this section of the game. And then I head to Lily Cove City. Well, almost, because I'm out of healing items here, and so I save in front of this trainer, he's a spinner, and I was really hoping that I was going to be able to bag trick past him, but I mess it up, he fights me, Chimeco only has three hit points, and his Manectric knocks me out. So, that's sort of a random and third reset. On my next attempt, I make it by him, and then I backtrack to Mount Pyre. Here, I want to draw your attention to the fact that I'm being very careful today, and I do manage to sneak by the Wobbuffet trainer. That lets me grab Shadow Ball and proceed to Lily Cove City, where I pick up the TM for rest, a PP up, the TM for return, and now it's time for the hideouts. In the Magma hideout, there are two items that I really like to go out of my way to pick up. The first is a rare candy, and the second is the PP Max. Then I have to face Maxi. Now in this fight, I expect that he's going to be a little bit easier because I have Hidden Power to deal with his Dark-type Mightyena. It intimidates me, and I was really hoping that Hidden Power would get the KO, but it doesn't. That allows Mightyena to use Scary Face, lowering Chimeco's speed, so that's not good. Crobat hits with Air Cutter, but Psychic knocks it out in one turn, and all that's left is Camerupt. I go for Psychic, I move first, it doesn't knock it out, Camerupt sets up Amnesia, Maxi heals with a Super Potion, but my second Psychic, ah, oh, doesn't do quite enough, come on. Anyways, I get another Psychic and I knock it out, so that was an easy fight. So let's summarize how this playthrough is going until this point. Chimeco is basically slow against Dark types, but great against everything else. Next, I face Matt in the Team Aqua hideout, and he's no challenge for Chimeco. And with that out of the way, I'm heading towards one of the toughest gym leaders in any solo playthrough, and this is Tate and Liza. In Emerald version, you can't actually initiate the battle with them unless you have two Pokemon in your party. So that's why I picked up our friend Bruno the Magikarp earlier on in the playthrough, just so I'd have a really powerful ally for Chimeco to fight alongside. Now this little chime has been completely crushing the game until this point, but will this, the most challenging gym battle in the entire game, be its first true barrier? Well, let's find out. Tate and Liza lead with Claydol and Zatu, and I figured here that I would need to put one of them to sleep to hopefully prevent setup. Zatu one-shots Magikarp. Yeah, see, it was very useful. It took a hit. After that, I decided to use Hidden Power Fire on the Claydol, and like, it doesn't even do half. Okay, I'm uh, not feeling good about this fight, but luckily on the next turn, my Psychic gets a critical hit and knocks Claydol out. Okay, so that's good, but I'm really just not doing enough damage here. While Chimeco is able to take out the Zatu, it eventually goes down. Okay, so the obvious option here is to just teach Shadow Ball. I'm going to give up Yawn here because I do think it's overstated its welcome on my moveset. Now let's see how much this Ghost move can do to Tate and Liza. Well, it does more than half to the Zatu, 
and then I make a misclick on the next turn targeting the Claydol. It always resets which Pokemon you're targeting at the beginning of every turn. It's always targeting the right Pokemon. It's very frustrating. That gives the Zatu another turn to confuse Trimeco. I hit myself like, ah, this is just not going well. Finally, I knock it out. Solrock comes out. I go for Shadow Ball against it. It does half. It sets up Sunny Day. I hit another Shadow Ball to knock it out, so I prevent the Flamethrower. That's good. All this time, Claydol has just been chipping away at me with Psychic. My Citrus Berry restores some health, Shadow Ball does half to the Lunatone, and then it puts me to sleep with Hypnosis. Okay, so that's not good. While I do manage to wake up and deal a bit more damage, it's just not enough and Chimeco goes down. So I figured that that one was just bad luck because of the Hypnosis. After all, it's probably just going to miss its next Hypnosis. But in the next fight, things go much worse, and even without a Hypnosis, my Chimeco goes down. Okay, so one way to solve this problem is if I teach Rest in the place of Double Edge. After all, I really don't want to be using physical moves. Like, I know Shadow Ball is a physical move in this generation, but I kind of have to use it for super effective damage here. What I'm hoping for here is that Rest's recovery is going to give me enough sustain so that I can knock out the last two Pokemon. After all, I'm consistently able to knock out two of their Pokemon. And in this case, that's exactly how it plays out. I heal up, and by the time it's only Claydol and Lunatone on the field, they can't do enough damage to me, even when the Claydol boosts itself with Ancient Power, that eventually I'm able to get enough Shadow Balls in and knock their Pokemon out. So, yes, Trimeco did struggle here a little bit, but it was more just me trying to figure out what the strategy was. Once I figured the strategy out, I didn't need any rare candies, and I just won. So yeah, once again, this little thing, it's impressing me. Like, I have to say, Chimeco is one of those Pokemon that as a kid, I was like, whatever. It's a single stage Pokemon, it doesn't evolve into anything cool. Why would I spend any more time thinking about this? Just catch it for the Pokedex and box it after that. But now as an adult, this little thing is finding its way into my heart, like Venomoth. I don't run into any issues in the battle with Steven at the Space Center, and with that, I'm now ready to tackle the plot line. There's only one major battle during all of this, and that's the fight against Archie. Since he has Dark types, I was expecting some challenge here. Mighty Enna intimidates first turn, so Shadow Ball's not going to be a good option. Hidden Power does more than half. Mighty Enna uses Scary Face, cutting my speed, and then Archie uses a Super Potion. But that doesn't save it from my next Hidden Power. Crobat's next. Obviously, it's going to move first because I got hit by Scary Face. It only does a little bit, and then I knock it out with Psychic, and last is Sharpedo. Honestly, I don't really have a good move here. Like, I really don't want to use Shadow Ball, but I think it's the best play. Luckily, uh, right on time, Sharpedo uses Swagger, boosting my attack stat, so that's nice. Thank you so much. While it's annoying that I'm confused, I do manage to take the Sharpedo out. I complete the plot line, Rayquaza saves the day, and now it's time for Wan. For this battle, I've changed up Chimeco's moveset. I've added Calm Mind in the place of Hidden Power, and I've also given it the Person Berry so that it can snap out of confusion when the Love Disc confuses me. That way I can set up with Calm Mind once I get confused, then I can strike back and start the sweep. Unfortunately, when he sends out his Crawdont, I accidentally use Psychic on it, like, ugh, that's annoying. So I guess I have to take this thing out with Shadow Ball. That's very unfortunate because I'm doing so little damage to it. Still, I have Rest, so I'm not particularly worried. After all, once this Dark Type's out of the way, I'm going to be able to sweep quickly through the rest of his team. At least that's the theory. Juan gets extra annoying using a Hyper Potion on the Crawdont, delaying my victory even more. But I get a critical hit speeding things up against the Crawdont, and then just before I knock it out, I set up Calm Mind one more time, use Rest to heal, and then finally knock it out with two Shadow Balls. Whiskash is next, I go for Psychic, and with plus three, I get the one hit. Okay, he only has two more Pokemon left. The first one is Celio, I go for Psychic, and it goes down in one hit. All right, it's time for his ace. Let's see if I can one-hit the Kingdra. I go for Psychic, and it does it. So, Chimeco makes it through Wan on its first attempt. To this point, the only gym battle that I actually reset during was Tate and Liza. But perhaps the League has a challenge for this Chime. First, I have to get through Victory Road. Wally's the first trainer who battles me there, and he should be very easy. He's never really good. He leads with Altaria. I figure I can just set up here with Calm Mind a little bit and then sweep with Psychic. With only plus two, Chimeco sweeps through all of his team members in one hit each, except the Gardevoir. And uh, that makes sense because that thing is a Psychic type as well. It resists my Psychic. So that was an easy fight. 
And now we have to start looking ahead to Sydney because he's the first member of the Elite Four that I have to face. Now I want to keep Shadow Ball on my moveset because I'm going to use it against Phoebe. I want to use Psychic as my primary damage dealing move, of course, and then I want to use Calm Mind for setup and Rest to recover after I've set up. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of flexibility in my moveset, which is concerning because I can't defeat Sydney with Shadow Ball. Like, the Mighty Anna is going to come out, intimidate me, and then, like, that plan is completely ruined. So, how can I do this? Well, I can pick up the TM for Psychic in Victory Road, and then I can teach a different move in Psychic's place for Sydney. And then in Victory Road, I accidentally bump into these two people. Okay, so they have a Sableye and a Lunatone. Uh, so Shadow Ball is good against the Lunatone, but Psychic can't hit the Sableye, and I guess I'm gonna have to knock it out with just Shadow Ball. However, then they send out a Soul Rock, my Shadow Ball doesn't knock it out, and it uses Explosion. Okay, so... Another random reset to just some, like, trainers in the middle of Victory Road. This one actually sets me back quite far because I have to fight Wally again and then make my way through all of Victory Road. I pick up Psychic on my way, and this time I'm careful enough to make my way by the trainers without getting into a double battle again. And as a result, I make it to the League. Well, actually, I make it to this guy who's right before the League. He sends out Cacturn, and, like, I don't have anything to deal with this thing, so... Yeah, it's another random reset. Because I picked up the TM for Psychic, I can teach Hidden Power in the place of Psychic, and then defeat this Cacturn with ease. After all, Sydney has Grass types, so this move is going to continue being useful. His lead is Mighty Anna. It intimidates Chimeco, I immediately go for Calm Mind, setting up my special, and then it uses Sand Attack, lowering my accuracy. Ugh, it's really frustrating. I set up again, it hits with Double Edge, doing a lot of damage, and then finally my Hidden Power connects and knocks the Mighty Anna out. Okay, that's good. Next is Shift Tree, Hidden Power connects, and it takes it out in one hit. Alright, that's good, but I'm probably going to miss at some point. After all, I sustained a sand attack from the AI, but apparently not today, because I one-hit the Cacturn. Crawdaunt's next. Ah, oh, this thing again, great. Like, either Hidden Power or Shadow Ball, they're both not very good. But in this case, Hidden Power is pretty good, even though it's resisted. It does more than half, and I knock the Crawdaunt out on the next turn. I still haven't missed. Absol's last. I go for Hidden Power, and there's my miss. It hits me with Rock Slide doing a little bit, and then my Hidden Power connects on the next turn, and that's it! Absol goes down! So Chimeco takes a first attempt victory against the Dark Type Elite 4 member. Pretty good. But it also has a type weakness to Phoebe, who's next. She leads with Dusclops, and the reason this thing is so annoying is because it loves to use Protect, and it also has the ability Pressure, which really messes up your PP. By the time I finally take it out, I only have 7 uses of Shadow Ball left. Bayonet's next, I go for Shadow Ball, it does more than half, Bayonet uses Grudge. I really didn't want to knock it out and have it deplete all my Shadow Ball PP, so I decided to set up Calm Mind instead. However, then it gets a critical hit and takes Chimeco down to low health. Ugh, this is not going well. I knock it out with Hidden Power on the next turn, so it doesn't deplete my PP, and move on to the next Bayonet. Hidden Power just barely doesn't knock this one out, and then it strikes back with Shadow Ball taking Chimeco down. Okay, so that's my first reset during the League. However, what I realized during that last fight is that I don't think Chimeco should be using Shadow Ball here. What if I just use Psychic? After all, I can set up on the first turn against the Dusclops while it uses Protect. Then, Psychic one hits. It also one hits the following Bayonet. And it also one-hits the third one. Okay, this is going very well. Phoebe sends in her Ace Dusclops. This one doesn't go down, it survives on just a little bit of health. It hits Trimeco with Shadow Ball for about a third, and then I knock it out. Okay, time for Sableye. Now this thing is a dark type, so I'm gonna have to use Shadow Ball here. I do about a third to it, but it's not enough, and Sableye takes Chimeco down. I thought at this point that what I should do was maybe set up Calm Mind over and over again, and then sweep with Hidden Power. However, this is very risky because Dusclops can use Curse, and if this happens, the fight's just over. But there's an alternative that'll make the Sableye much easier. I can replace Shadow Ball with Psychic, and this way I can still use Hidden Power whenever the Sableye comes out. I sweep through all of her Pokemon with plus one Psychic, and then when Sableye comes out, Hidden Power takes it to red in one turn. Sableye sets up double team, Phoebe uses a full restore, okay, this is getting a bit scary, but still, I manage to connect with hits from Hidden Power, and the Sableye goes down. And with that, Chimeco is past all of the opponents that have a type advantage over it. Glacia leads with Celio. It's not a particularly strong lead Pokemon, and it loves to set up Hail, so I can set up Calm Mind here, and then hopefully use Rest, 
I assume that this fight is just going to be a straight up sweep once I reach plus 6. I know the Celio is using Body Slam and I'm not setting up my defense stat whenever I use Calm Mind, but Chimeco's base defense is like quite good. I didn't mention that at the beginning of the video, but yeah, this thing's kind of tanky. I get plus 6, use Rest to heal up. Unfortunately, the Celio does a lot of damage to me in the combination with Hail. And by the time I wake up and hit with Psychic, I have less than half health left. Well, let's hope I can sweep. The Glalie falls to Hidden Power Fire. The second Glalie also falls to Hidden Power Fire. Against the next Steelio, I had to make the tough call to continue using Hidden Power Fire here, and that's because I only have one PP left on Psychic. I really should have used an Aether before this fight. As a result, Glacia gets really annoying, the Celio sets up Hail, and then she uses full restores, wasting a bunch of time, and chipping away at Chimeco's health. Okay, I really need to one-hit the wall rain. And... Psychic does. Okay, so I've made it all the way to Drake, the final member of the Elite Four. Chimeco only has 11 resets so far. It is doing exceptionally well. Drake leads with Shellgun, and it loves to use Protect on the first turn, so I lead with Calm Mind to set up. After that, I go for Psychic and knock his lead out. Flygon's next, and my Psychic takes it down in one hit. Chimeco levels up to level 65, and Drake sends in Salamence. It intimidates me, which doesn't matter because I'm using Psychic, but unfortunately I don't get the KO, allowing Salamence to get a crunch in. Drake heals it, however, then I get two Psychics in a row, and I knock it out. Altaria survives a single Psychic. Drake heals it with a full restore, and then it uses Dragon Dance, and I knock it out. Kingdra's last, and a single Psychic takes it out. So with that, Chimeco has made it all the way to the champion. It's time for the trainer that represents just how much water there is in this region. Let's face Wallace. He leads with Whale Lord, and for this fight, I've specifically given Chimeco Shockwave and a Chesto Berry. First turn, I go for Psychic, dealing damage to the Whale Lord, so its Water Spout can't deal much damage to me. Because of that, I'm feeling safe, and I can use Calm Mind to set up as much as I want. After getting plus 4, Wallace has healed Whale Lord to full health, and he also sets up Rain Dance, so I decided this was the moment to knock it out with Shockwave. Tentacruel's next, it has massive special defense, but Shockwave still gets the one hit. Ludicolo comes out next, and against it, Psychic makes more sense. I take it down in one turn after sustaining some damage from a Surf. Whiskash also falls in one hit, and then it's time for Gyarados. I outspeed, Shockwave hits, does four times damage, and takes the dragon out. All that's left is the Milotic. Is Chimeco gonna defeat the champion in its first attempt? I think it is. It moves first, hits with Shockwave, and even the Milotic goes down. I cannot believe it. Chimeco defeats the League in a time of 2 hours, 7 minutes, and 22 seconds, with 11 resets at level 67. This took 7 hours and 35 minutes of game time. However, the most challenging battle is still coming up next, and that's the battle against Steven Stone in Meteor Falls. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Chimeco has the potential, right now at least, to perhaps clock in faster than Mewtwo. Now, I really want to mention to everyone that I do not think that Mewtwo is worse than Chimeco by no means. I definitely think that Mewtwo could do much better if I did these games again. This is why I do second playthroughs in so many of my videos. However, in this case, I'm only doing first attempts in Pokemon Emerald while I learn the game. And I think we can see just how much my knowledge is improving in the about three months that separated the play with Mewtwo and now this play with Chimeco. However, I also don't want to say that Chimeco is bad, because I think that this thing is really impressing. But all of that isn't relevant if Chimeco can't get past Steven. So, let's see how it can do. For this fight, I gave it 11 rare candies, which I saved throughout the playthrough. So now Chimeco's level 78. Steven leads with Skarmory, and this thing loves to poison you with Toxic. However, to counter that strategy, I brought a Chesto Berry and Rest into the fight. This means I can set up with Calm Mind until I get poisoned, and then after the bad poison has stacked up for a few turns, Chimeco's at red health, I use Rest, and I wake up right away because of the Chesto Berry. Ah, Resto Chesto strats, so satisfying. Because I have plus 5, I decide to strike back now, and I knock the Skarmory out with one hit from Hidden Power Fire. Okay, 
that's a good start. Steven sends in Cradley next, and this thing is a special tank. And as a result, it survives my plus five hidden power on red health. It confuses Chimeco, I hit myself, and then I realize that hidden power is not actually the best move here. It's better to use Psychic, because rock types resist fire type moves. So I go for Psychic, because it has the same type attack bonus, and I knock the Cradley out. Steven sends in Metagross next, I knock it out in one hit with hidden power, and then it's time for the Claydol. Now, I honestly don't have a good option against this thing, but it really doesn't have a good option against me either. There's a bit of back and forth here, it takes Chimeco down to low health with ancient power, I have to use rest to heal, and then eventually I knock it out. Steven only has two Pokemon left now. He chooses Agron first, hidden power is just slightly better than Psychic, but because of my massive setup, I knock it out in one hit. All that's left is his Armaldo. I go for Hidden Power Fire, and it takes it out! So Trimeco clocks in with a time of 2 hours 11 minutes and 17 seconds, with 11 resets at level 79, and this took 7 hours and 49 minutes of game time. But where do these results place it in my leaderboard? Well, they uh, place it just in front of Mewtwo. Yes, Chimeco was in fact 7 seconds faster than Mewtwo. It also had 7 less resets. Granted, it did beat the game at a much higher level, and with slightly more game time. However, I think the big difference here is just that I played Chimeco later. Now, I'll mention now before people get too upset, saying that Mewtwo deserves much better. Of course it does. I plan to in the future collect better results with Mewtwo. I wanted to play Mewtwo and Rayquaza early on in my Pokemon Emerald playthroughs, so that I could get a sense of just how much I had improved when I play them later on. This way we kind of know what my skill ceiling was at the beginning of my Pokemon Emerald playing, and then we can see what my skill ceiling will end up being near the end. So yeah, today, Chimeco earns itself the second spot in my leaderboard. This is a very surprising performance, and I think Chimeco is very underrated. You should all try one out sometime. Like, subscribe, and ring the Chimeco. Also comment because I gotta read them all. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much, it means the world to me. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.